I'll be showing you how my world got turned upside down. First I got my friend to pretend like he was pushing me on the swing, and then I 3D tracked and stabilized the footage. In the footage you can see dandelions are blowing across the frame, so I spent hours of work trying to get rid of these damn dandelions. Shot footage of me swinging, which I was able to rotoscope both me and the shadow out, and then put it back into the main comp. Using a program called Make Human, I was able to adjust the size, the proportions, and the overall look of my 3D model, and then I replaced the head with a 3D model of my head, and changed the pants and the shoes to match what I was wearing. I animated myself swinging around, and then I did some ragdoll simulations to add a little bit more dynamics to it. From here, I did a cloth simulation for the shirt, simulated some hair to whip around, I did a swing simulation to collide with the simulated mesh, and a few wood chips to bounce up when I hit the ground. Then added some lights to my scene, rendered it out, brought it into After Effects to do some simple compositing. Bam! That is what happens when you use the big kid swings. Here's how I unwind for the weekend. First, I threw my favorite sweater on, and then pretended like I was pulling a string. In Houdini, I created a line and then used some vex coating to make it into a spiral, which I was able to control some extra parameters. I then used the soft selection tool to move it to the shape of my body. I animated the string constraints that die over time, and with the vellum solver, I was able to create a realistic string simulation. Using a projection map from the footage, I was able to create an accurate material. In After Effects, I created a rough map where I wanted both the clean plate and the string to be visible. From there, you just have to create about 20 different clean plates, do about 10 different masks, have three mental breakdown but after you're done you can just relax and unwind here's how i stepped on a rake and split in half first i shot my footage of me acting like i got hit by a rake and then walking out of frame I was able to use that empty frame and mask out a few areas to create a clean plate i've been trying out this program where all you need to do is mask out your subject create a png import it and it creates a 3d model i imported the 3d model and positioned it where i was standing and then I created some collision geometry. After stepping on a few rakes, I thought, let's make it CG and animate it. I needed to create two halves for my body, so I used a boolean and created a box and then cut myself in the middle. After animating the glue constraints to get deleted over time, I was able to find a simulation that I like. I was able to project my textures onto my 3D model, and for the inside, I wasn't too sure. After doing a Google search, I found out that we kind of look like steak inside. Brought everything back into After Effects and did some compositing, and now you have two halves of your body. Today I'll be showing you why you should avoid metal slides at the park. Oh, that's hot! First I shot the footage of me going down the slide and then walking out of frame. I then 3D tracked the scene, and then using some empty frames I was able to create a convincing clean plate, which I was able to hide myself walking out of frame. From there I created a 3D model of a slide and then replaced the one that I shot in the footage. I created a 3D model of myself and then animated it to match the footage, and this is to help with the reflections and adding them back into the slide. I brought the model into Houdini and then turned it into some points. Using the points I did a flip simulation, and then once I found a simulation I liked, I turned it into a mesh. Put everything back into Cinema 4D and rendered it out using Octane. In After Effects, I rotoscoped myself out and then put myself on top of the new CG slide. I imported the render of me melting, and to sell the effect more, I masked out parts of my body and animated them so that your eye has something to fall when I turn into the pile of goo. And after that, you have a real representation of what it feels like going down a metal slide. I'm going to show you how I stepped on a crack and broke my back. First, I 3D tracked the scene, and then I cleaned up some spots that I didn't like. I then extended the fence to be a little bit longer, and then just add some overall colors and life to my scene. I then rotoscoped myself back into the shot. I used a program called Make Human, which made it easy to make a custom 3D model to look like myself, and then all I needed to do was swap heads with a 3D model of mine. Threw it in Mixamo and got it all rigged up so I can do some animations. Yippee! <laughs> I then animated my 3D model to match my movement as best as I can. I then brought the 3D animation into Houdini, which I was able to take the top half and do a soft body simulation. Simulated some hair that nobody saw because of video compression, brought it into Marvelous Designer, and did a cloth simulation on my 3D mesh. Using a separate shot on my face, I was able to mask out both of my eyes and my mouth, and then I was able to use this as an animated texture for my 3D model. Rendered everything out, did some compositing, some masking, and some color correction, and bam, that's how you step on a crack and break your back. And since some of you are asking, here are all the mobile apps I used to create this effect. Today I'm going to show you why it's sometimes better to let things go. First thing I like to do for every shot is I track the footage, remove some stuff that I don't need, change the sky to look a little bit nicer, and then rotoscope myself and some stuff back into the footage. Just like my previous breakdown on how I broke my back, I used a program called Make Human, and from there I was able to kitbash my head, some pants, and some shoes on, leaving out the sweater because I know I'm going to have to simulate that later. Brought the model into Mixamo to get it all rigged up, and bam, now I have an official stunt double for just joshing. 
Next thing I did was create some collision geometry and then imported my 3D stunt double. Animated both the drill and the 3D model to rotate. Using vellum, I was able to create a soft body ragdoll simulation and then afterwards do a hair sim on top of it. I brought the simulated mesh into Marvelous Design where I was able to do a cloth simulation for the hoodie. I did a grass simulation, but it didn't make the final cut because nobody would have saw it. I rendered it out using Octane, brought it back into After Effects and did some compositing, added some dust elements, and that is how I spun my head around and around and around. Today I'll be showing you why you should always have a squatter when you squat. I filmed myself struggling to do a squat and then I moved out of frame so I can get a clean plate. I rotoscoped myself out of the footage and then added it back into the clean plate shot. I then created a 3D model of myself and if you're interested in how I did this, I have a full tutorial up on my YouTube. I then created a scene in Cinema 4D which I was able to create some collision geometry. I hand animated the bar and the weights to match the footage as best as I could. Brought everything into Houdini where I was able to do the soft body, the cloth, and the rigid body sim all together. Brought everything back into Cinema 4D and using an HDR I was able to get some accurate lighting. I rendered everything out using Octane and brought it all into After Effects. To make the transition as seamless as possible I masked out parts of my body and hand animated them to fall down with the simulated body. The last thing I needed to do was mask out myself in the mirror and animate it falling down. And this is how I made the video of why you should never skip like that. Here's how you could stub your toe in the most painful way possible. First, I took the leg off the table and pretended like I stubbed my toe. I then 3D tracked my scene and used some clean plates to remove the tracking marker, my foot, and rotoscope my pants back in. I used Mocha to track my foot, and to test the track, I used some Croc charms. Crocs. Please sponsor me if you're watching this video. I used the box and a boolean technique to create a split in my foot. I added a CG table leg and some collision geometry. After a few simulations and changing the parameters, we were able to find a foot simulation we like. Ooh. I was able to project the textures from my footage onto my foot model and use a meat texture for the inside. Brought everything back into After Effects and did some simple compositing and bam, now you have two halves of a foot. Today I'll be showing you guys how to successfully parallel park every time. The first thing I did was film an empty street which I was able to recreate in 3D and then add some 3D cars into it. I imported a car that I knew I wanted to animate and using Cinema 4D's car rig I was able to rig up the car and then animate it to look like it's parallel parking. And then with a 3D model of myself I was able to rig it and animate it to look like I was driving the car. Brought the animated car into Houdini which I was able to create a proxy geometry for for the simulation. The next step was telling Houdini when I wanted the animated car to be animated and when I wanted it to be simulated. Then sit back and press simulate 100 times until you find the right simulation. Back in Cinema 4D, I used an HDRI to get the most accurate lighting. I also added a lot of dust, imperfections, dirt onto my car to make the car look as realistic as possible. And with those easy steps, you should never be able to fail a driver's test again. Today I'll be showing you how I crushed my chest using visual effects. <coughs> In the raw footage, I used the stick with some tracker markers on it so I can track it and replace it with the CG bar afterwards. Filmed a clean plate and then just cleaned up some stuff in the scene. I then rotoscoped myself out of the first shot and put myself into the clean shot. I then animated the bar to match the movement of the stick with the tracker markers and did a simulation afterwards to fall on the bench. Using a 3D model of myself, I was able to match the position I was in the footage and then also do some animation to help me with some shadows afterwards. I then brought the scene into Houdini where I was able to take my body and separate it from the clothes to have different simulations and then I just did some simulation until I found one I liked. Brought everything back into Cinema 4D and using an HDR I was able to light the scene and then I also added an aerial light to get more of a prominent shadow. Rendered everything out and then brought it back into After Effects and since I'm using a CG shadow the whole time there's no cut between the real footage and the CG shadow making it perfectly seamless. And all that's left is to add the CG reflection into the mirror. And with those few simple steps you can make this video too.